We are devoting the rest of the broadcast to our Earth Matters coverage. As carbon dioxide levels continue to rise every year, big cities are looking for ways to go green. This month, London introduced the world's first ultra-low emission zone to fight the city's toxic levels of air pollution. It is one of the most radical anti-pollution policies on the planet. Mark Phillips takes us for a ride in London to show us how the polluter pays. You don't have to go somewhere exotic to run into the effects of climate change these days. A drive around central London will do it. And because of environmental concerns, that drive has gotten a lot more expensive for some lately. Approach central London and you'll see these signs announcing a charge just for bringing your car into town. Ka-ching, about 15 bucks. And if you've got an older car, especially if it's a diesel, the overhead cameras will spot you. And under the new ultra-low emission zone, that'll be another 16 and a half bucks. That's over $30 just to drive into town. Why? Just ask the mayor. If you are going to drive in with a more polluting vehicle, you'd have to pay for that. The point of Mayor Sadiq Khan's charges is to reduce pollution by reducing the number of vehicles which produce it. So this is the um, uh, iconic graph of atmospheric CO2 concentrations. At the British Met Office, the country's weather forecasting service, they track the rise of carbon dioxide, the most prevalent greenhouse gas, much of the data coming from the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii, which has been measuring CO2 since 1958. Scientists like Richard Betts count the gas in parts per million of the air around us. So it was almost down at 300 at the beginning, way past 400 now, so a 30% increase in CO2 over that half century or more. And why is that significant? It's significant because it's causing the world to warm. In just that period, average global temperatures have risen about one degree Fahrenheit, a rise scientists connect to more severe weather, increased flooding, and drought. There's still skeptics out there somehow who, who uh, either doubt the source of the extra CO2 in the atmosphere and where it's coming from. Even the skeptics, uh, those who are disputing that it's a problem, uh, will accept that the science is sound in that the warming uh, is caused by increased greenhouse gases. Over the past few years, we've been going to some of the Earth's extreme environments where the signs of climate change tend to show up first. We found that carbon that's been frozen in the Arctic permafrost is being released as it thaws. We found Antarctic islands where penguin colonies used to thrive that are now almost empty because the sea ice is gone. We've seen the coral bleaching due to warming on Australia's Great Barrier Reef. They used to simply produce daily weather forecasts in places like this. Now they can also look further into the future. So we can't predict individual weather days more than a few days ahead, but we can uh, make predictions of the annual average temperature and the, and the seasonal temperature and rainfall. And we're predicting that a warmer world, changing rainfall patterns and rising sea levels. The trend is up. Yeah. And if London is any example, the way we move around and the way we live our lives will change too. And on today's CBS This Morning podcast, Mark shares what he has learned about climate change while reporting around the world for his Climate Diary series. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. So if you have to pay more because your car is uh, putting out more pollution, do you think you'll get another car? Yes. Yeah, I think I would. so too. Yeah, I would. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Just another example. Everybody can do a little something. Or take the bus. Oh, yeah, or take the bus. Mm -hmm.